Okay, today we're going to check out the scientific investigation process and the practices of science. We've talked about defining science and we've practiced two of the most critical processes or practices of science in observation and inference. But there are a whole slew of other practices one might carry out when doing science. So in this video we're going to check out the following topics. The scientific process, the other scientific practices, and how we typically organize a scientific investigation. Up first, the scientific process, aka the scientific method, a scientific investigation, scientific inquiry, or practicing science, has changed looks many of times over the last decade. When I was first taught science, we called it the scientific method. You did science by following the scientific method. It was five steps and it went something like this. Question, research, experiment, results, and conclusion. Pretty plain Jane, no offense to Jane of course, but a scientific investigation, method, inquiry, and or just doing science is way, way more complicated and interesting than that. Today we like to say that the phrases of scientific process, scientific method, scientific investigation, scientific inquiry are all just ways to say one common thing, how someone is doing or practicing science. And they all follow the same basic steps. So, you can call it what you want, but I will typically refer to it as practicing science. Or, I'll use the term investigation a lot because when you investigate something, you're looking for an answer to a question, and science, as we defined it earlier, is a simple process of Q and A. So whatever you may call it, or whatever you wish you want to call it, all the phrases that mean doing science pretty much follow the same steps. Which brings us to the topic number two, the other scientific practices. Observing and inferring, we should have those down, right? I hope so. If not, check out the observation and inference video again and come and ask me any questions you still may have. The other practices or steps are as follows. Inquiring, researching, hypothesizing, experimenting, data collecting, data analyzing, communicating, concluding, and the one I cut off, got cut off here, collaborating. Let's take a closer look at each. Inquiring is the act of questioning. If you were to inquire about a sales price of a car or cell phone, you are asking a question in regards to the price of that item. Inquiring is usually the jumping off point of any scientific investigation and may have resulted from an observation or an inference. Researching is going out and finding more information about the topic you are inquiring about. You may want to see if there's already an answer out there and if it's a suitable one for you. You may find that someone has yet to answer it or is currently trying. Whatever the result, research is done to give you a clearer picture of what your potential answer to your question might be. Hypothesizing. Being high schoolers now, we have officially graduated from the definition of an educated guess. An educated guess about what is what I always like to ask when someone is hypothesizing for an experiment. When you make a hypothesis, you're providing a testable explanation for the question you are trying to answer. All of the steps or practices that follow your hypothesis hinge squarely on that testable explanation statement. Your experiment, the data you collect, your conclusion all directly relate to your hypothesis. So, we're not going to guess about anything that important. We're going to take our time and provide an explanation we can test and we can see if it proves to be a reasonable one. Experimenting. This practice is what I like to refer to as an umbrella term as in a lot of other smaller practices or classic scientific method steps fall under it. The experiment in a scientific method is built from the foundation of your hypothesis. All procedures or steps, materials, predictions, scientific models, and variables are designed to test your initial explanation for the question you are trying to answer. An experiment is how you test your hypothesis and its accuracy as an explanation. It may be as simple as a survey of 20 people to see why they're wearing a certain color of clothing, or as complicated as a 10-year medical study into the effects of an athletic supplement. Regardless, it's a large practice in a scientific investigation, and it has a video of its own you'll be watching soon. It's titled Experimental Design. More on that to come later. Data collecting. While you're testing your hypothesis, you're going to be looking for specific information that is a result of your test. This is what we like to call data, or data. It's your friend, and you should take great care of it. The data you collect during a scientific investigation should be precise and as accurate as possible. 
You collect data by observing and sometimes you can use specialized tools to help in the collection process. You collect data in two major categories or organize them in two major categories, quantitative and qualitative data with quantitative referring to numerical data or the amount or quantity of things like temperature or the amount of students in a classroom or time, etc., etc., and qualitative data refers to the description of something and has classic forms like color, smell, texture, taste, so on and so forth. We are data crazy in science and as it provides the needed proof to either accept or decline our hypothesis. Data analysis. So you have oodles and oodles and gobs and gobs of data. Now, what do you do with it? Well, you chart it, you graph it, you compare and contrast it, and you see if you recognize any trends or common occurrences or any correlations between different sets of data that would either support or disprove your hypothesis. Data analysis is you looking back at what you gathered from your experiment and seeing what it is telling you about your tested explanation. Concluding. Once your data has been completely analyzed, you can finally form a conclusion about your scientific investigation. This is typically seen as the end of a scientific investigation, but not so fast. Usually scientists take time to restate the original question, hypothesis, and major moments of error during an experiment. And while concluding, a person reveals their findings and how they relate to the hypothesis while stating whether the data supports or does not support their explanation for their question. Conclusions are extremely exciting for Mr. Williams to read. I love reading conclusions. Notice how I didn't say wrong or right in regards to the hypothesis, but rather supports or does not support. We never consider anything in science to be completely right or completely wrong, as we are always open to new and better explanations for things that occur in the natural world. Okay. So, inquiring, researching, hypothesizing, experimenting, data collecting, data analysis, and concluding all seem to happen in a pretty regular order. Could they be mixed around every now and then? Yes, but typically these steps have a pretty set pattern in which they occur. Two not mentioned yet are communicating and collaborating. Why did I not mention these yet? Because I wanted to pair them with observing and inferring, as they can happen throughout the entire scientific process, along with inquiring and researching. Pretty funny. Um, communicating is simply sharing your information with others and seeing what their thoughts are while collaborating is actually teaming up with others and working together to provide an explanation to a scientific question. Working together for the cause there. Through a scientific investigation, a person is always, take note of this, always observing, inferring, inquiring, researching, communicating, and at times, collaborating. Well... That about does it for descriptions of scientific practices and how a scientific investigation is typically organized. Remember that it's not a set in stone process, but more of a cycle of practices used to generate an agreed upon explanation, a reason why something is the way it is. A scientific investigation can always change course right at the beginning, in the middle, or towards the end. It all just depends on what has happened or is happening during the investigation. Remain open to the process, its practices, and the idea that they can fall into many different sequences when trying to answer questions. Okay, that does it for the majority of all the content. I want to show you something real fast. I put together a guided note sheet for this video. So whether you watched it already once, awesome, good for you. You might be able to fill some of this guided note sheet out. If you don't catch some things, go back and rewatch the video again. Come prepared to class next time, understanding and being comfortable with all of this information. The guided note sheet, okay, is going to look a little bit something like this. It's going to be called Scientific Investigation and Scientific Practices. I'm going to share it with you when I send out your homework reminder email tomorrow, which is Sunday. It's Saturday right now for me. Um, um, and I'm also going to paste it on the classroom website, okay? So you have access to this guided note sheet, and you also have access to the video. So that does it for your homework. Have a good one. See you in class next time.